All right, so let's get started. Why did I pick these monitors? It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot Have of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, uh, so like I said, so first thing I want you guys to do is just spend a bit of time just block out stuff using cubes and cylinders. Really low poly. Make sure there's no like extra edges on them that you don't need. Um, and really just kind of, as you would, just in Unity or whatever, just make it out of primitives. Just intersect stuff. Don't worry about like over-modeling it at this point. Just place primitives. Um, and uh, it's, again, it's just it's just for scale. So we'll, we'll do this, and we'll take a look at what everything kind of looks and feels like, and we'll kind of critique them from there. I right, know which one do I want to do. I didn't realize these were all different. I thought it was just different angles of one. So many monitors. What kind of configurations are these two? Who's looking at these? I guess it's like people have their setups in like specific places. Once you get used to looking in places, then you're kind of used to it. So I guess whoever made this is just used to doing crazy shit. All right, I'm going to probably do... I like this one up here. He's got some really cool tech up here. He's got some like little pipes and things. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to model this like top monitor area. So a lot of times when I'm making like elements, like I'll, I'll kind of put together elements for this guy. And since a lot of my shit's on angles, I'm not going to start modeling on an angle. I'll just start modeling everything kind of square and flat and then position it later because obviously modeling on an angle is, uh, is the worst. Um, all right, so let's start modeling this guy. Remember, for, keep your snaps on if you want to rotate stuff easily. Never forget about your snaps. Now, I did say play stuff with primitives, but I mean, obviously, feel free to extrude and scale things a little bit if you need to. You don't have to be overly picky on your stuff. Now, in most cases, when I work off of a concept, I'll have my concept on, on a second monitor, which is much easier to work with. But in this case, since we're in class and I'm using a laptop, I'm down to one monitor like the rest of you guys. Sucks. You know, I never realize, you, you kind of forget how good it is working with dual monitors until you have to go back. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to get a third one just for like Netflix. That work. Yeah, it's like once you have three, you have to go back to two. That's true. I'm watching a lot of Dragon Ball at work recently. It's really awesome. There's a website called Saiyan Watch, and they just have all the Dragon Ball ever on there to stream. And I'd never, like, I don't know if you guys are big Dragon Ball fans, but they have a thing called uh, uh, Dragon Ball Kai, which I never yeah, knew about, awesome. which is like recut and stuff. It's so good. Like redubbed and like shortened and stuff. They got rid of all the stupid charging. It's awesome. You know, it's it's still a long, it still takes a special long Special beam cannon. Yeah. It takes three episodes just to kill Freezer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you gotta do Spear Pong. You charge that shit. Yeah. I haven't watched that show since I was like a kid and I forgot how awesome it is. Alright, so that's our like main monitor. It's a little. It's the field's not like. Quite chunky enough. All right, and then it has uh, it's got some fucking okay, metal thing over here. I don't know what the shit that is, but. Remember, save your files, everybody. Save your files. I kind of want to get a parrot for the office and just teach it to yell, save your shit. <laughs> <laughs> you just forget. <laughs> we have uh, our like neighbors in the office across, like behind one of our walls. I think they have like a hound dog in there. And he's like a rooster. He's like a, a really weird rooster, but he cro like he just starts yelping or doing his hound yelling thing at like four or three o'clock every single day. It's like, 
like on the dot. We're like, oh, there's only a couple hours left to work. Uh -oh. The hound's freaking out. Our office, everybody has dogs. It's crazy. Yeah, this will be like a little clamp or something holding on to the TV. It's good at this point. The nice thing about working with primitives is it's a good time to start helping you kind of understand what all the things you're making. It's really important that you guys, as you're modeling your stuff, you know what each thing kind of does, even if it's whatever tech and garbage, whatever stuff. Um, you still have to kind of understand, you know, why there's clamps on things and, you know, why is something structured the way it is? And doing this primitive stuff will help you kind of understand that stuff um, as best as you kind of can. Because it's important to know, because the more you know about your shit or feel you know about your stuff, it'll look more believable. And, you know, if your stuff at this point isn't perfect, you know, that's okay. You'll, you'll have time to adjust all this stuff as you um, as you piece it all together and uh, kind of start going from there. So, Tube there, and uh, yeah, that stuff I'll model out later. All right, let's model uh, this bottom monitor here. For now we'll just do a box. I guess this thing that comes out on an angle. That's fine. Let's just model. Let's just model that monitor there. So he's. Uh, roughly about the width of this one. Alright, so we got uh, main monitor. It's kind of like a cool angle. I'm going to use my chamfer here to chamfer this one side. The important thing with tech too when you guys are working on sci-fi is um, uh, keep your angles like similar. Uh, like do like 90 degrees and like 45 or like just 22 and a half. Like don't eyeball your angles too much if you're going to do things like this. Um, like I kind of eyeball this guy in the back but I'll probably fix him up to be more of an equal angle. The reason for that is this stuff just looks a lot better in, in tech when it's kind of like perpendicular and sharp and stuff. Um, you don't want like one angle to be like 22 degrees and one be like 30 and they're like slightly getting further away from each other. Um, you know, nobody would machine stuff like that unless it was on purpose to just make it look a little artsy. But if you're making something utilitarian like a crate or a monitor, um, you know, keep your angles nice and sharp. Okay, so we got this thing on like a weird angle. Um, okay, well that'll be fine for now. This will be my monitor. about that inset later on. For now. Alright, so we got this guy and I'll build this little actually no, I'll build that little monitor later. So maybe I'll continue this so this will go down. So that's down in this line so it's nice and straight and then uh, let's do that guy what does he do he goes down and then yeah, he's on an angle switch over to my top viewport here use my anti-aliasing to figure out when I'm at a nice 45 degree angle
gets me a 45. Actually, that's probably a little. Yeah, no, that's fine. And, and then I'm, this thing's going to be on top, so I'm going to assume this thing cuts over. these edges just so it's easier. Let's connect that up there. While you're doing your low poly, make sure you don't, um, like if you're doing cuts and things to get extra shapes, just don't try and don't go too high poly on your stuff or like it's not high poly at this point, but just messy. Like it's fine to add edges and stuff, but make sure you clean them up and, and uh, do all that. So I'll do this guy here. You don't want to get in over your head with the amount of verts you're going to have to move around later on. Yeah, it's starting to feel better. I think one of the most important things when you're modeling too is um, every like, I don't know, minute or two when you're after you've modeled something, just go into perspective view and just rotate around it a bunch of times. Um, really learn to look at your model just get used to looking at your model from every angle a lot because uh, a lot of people get stuck working in like the front view for a really long time especially on characters characters are that's probably one of the most important things you can remember people work on their character from like a front and then from a side and then they'll have this really boxy ass looking dude <laughs> um, and all you have to do is just stop every little while and just look at your stuff from every angle and just see if it just feels right if it's chunky enough if uh, if it's like structurally sound enough and uh, just kind of go from there. Excuse me. All right. Um, so we got a uh, little angle there. Don't worry about that little guy in a bit. We got that. Um, yeah. Let's model. Let's model that triangular thing there. So. Top view here. So this guy is probably yeah, he kind of sticks out. And he goes in. Okay, and then he's angled that way. So what I'm gonna do is select these two edges. I'm just gonna connect. See what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna connect a couple. This is uh, something I like doing too. If you wanna like, I basically want to cut an edge that kind of is perpendicular to this edge, but obviously it's kind of a pain in the butt to try and you know move this around. So what I'll do is I'll I'll select these two sets of edges. I'll hit the connect um, settings, and I'll change this to two. The nice thing about setting things to two is you can use this tool to like push and pull them. So I'm just only gonna pay attention to this edge just to make sure it's where I want it to be. So let's say I want it to be over here, right? It's nice. And then I could just go and remove that guy and then remove that guy. And then I'll have it where I want without having to like manually move stuff around, which is pretty nice. And then uh, I'll adjust the angle on this guy because he's not perpendicular. And uh, sometimes when you start removing edges and things from boxes, like this one, my smoothing groups of this box stayed the same, even though I added edges. And it looks dumb, and it's just going to help. It's not going to help me visualize what this thing is starting to look like. Um, so there's a modifier, which I think I forgot to add into my modifier stack last time, called smooth. Mm -hmm. Smooth just, you put it on there and it just auto smooths your stuff to like 
45 degrees or 30 degrees, whatever it's set to default. I like just to have it there quickly so I don't have to worry about my smoothing groups if they're ever looking like funky. I'll just throw that on there and, and, um, and move on with my life. All right. Maybe I want that a little chunkier. Cool, and then uh, how high does that guy go? He goes fairly high, and he goes a bit low. And then he starts kind of turning into half cylinder shit too. So we're gonna have to deal with that later on. Yeah, we might not have to. We could probably just mush cylinders into this thing. Oh, I see. Okay. But, uh, sometimes you got to interpret your stuff too, which is nice. It's kind of I, I kind of like working from like simple, or I mean, obviously this concept art isn't like super simple, but it's not like fully detailed and high res and tells you every single piece. It's good to have to imagine some of your shit and actually make it up. All right, so where are we at? We got this, uh, this little son of a bitch going. Let's uh, make whatever the shit this thing is. Looks like a sweet futuristic tape deck or something. Open it up. Throw a VHS in there. Cassette. Yeah, this is, you know what? I don't think these are monitors. I think this is a futuristic DJ setup. <laughs> That's what I think. I'm going to put like a vinyl player up here somewhere. And then like a bunch of USB drives, and then like a, an eight-track deck, so you just have all of your shit. You can just be doing all your crazy stuff. And whatever that thing is called, where they have the cylinders with the like little divots on there, and they spin to make music. The old timey oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever those were called. Like the uh, self-playing pianos. Yeah, yeah. I used to have one of those when I was a kid. Like this little, it was just a little box with this little round thing. And you just turn it, and it like little dings little things. things. Yeah, I was so amazed at it when I was a kid. I'm like, oh shit, it's music. It's just metal. I get amazed by stupid things. It was just in that mentality where everything had to be modeled from one shape. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It's like, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, I used to do that too. They're all there. Well, actually, that's not true. I started off doing this kind of stuff because my very first 3D program was called Bryce, and it's a terrain making tool. I didn't have Macs at the time. And aside from terrain, you could just make primitives. Mm -hmm. So I just spent like a year making Mario characters out of spheres and cylinders. <laughs> I made like Yoshi and stuff, and they were all awful, but it got me used to moving around in 3D space and placing stuff. And, mm -hmm. and then I got 3D Max 3, I think was my first one, 2.5 or 3, and it was the worst. There was no edit poly, it was only edit mesh. There was no ring or loop. There was no, like, any of these tools up here. It was, it was hard. <laughs> yeah. And I was a very ambitious high school student. I, I made a scene with two, like, Sephiroth-looking dudes fighting each other with swords in a cathedral. That was my, like, assignment. I made it. It looked awful, but I made it. I wish I had a 3D class in high school. I didn't. We had a tech class, and the school just happened to have a copy of 3D Max on one of the computers. And I go to my teacher, I'm like, can I like, do a project in this? He's like, you can. I will let you do no other project in this entire course if you just want to learn 3D Max. He's like, I can't help you because I don't fucking know it. <laughs> but if you want to do it, that's you don't have to do anything else. And that's, he just let me do a project for the whole semester, and it was the best. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't die. All right, so let's, you good? Nice. Super chill. You need the monitor that's like above you. <laughs> I didn't know how far back it freaked me out. Yeah, those are always terrifying. All right, so uh, let's model whatever the shit this thing is. So I'm going to start with this bottom piece here because it'll be a good base for me. Okay, so it's kind of lower, I think. <laughs> if you want to switch chairs, knock yourself out. I think there's a good one out there. Don't literally knock yourself out. Oh, whatever. Okay. What else? 
I don't have insurance or money, so <laughs> you can sue me if you like. Oh, I wouldn't sue you. <laughs> If I was in the States, I'd be terrified to like run classes and do things. I'd be like, just asking to get sued. Alright, so that's kind of like a round thing there. I don't know what it is, but that's good for now. Alright, then this thing kind of comes out at like a weird angle. If you guys have any questions or problems as you're working on this, just feel free to stop me and, and uh, ask away. Okay, so... I think I'm going to make this into two shapes. So we have one shape that's doing that. So I kind of got the general shape of what I want here, but I'm going to go fix my angles, remember? Sometimes it's okay to have a couple things on an off angle, as long as you know when you're doing it. If uh, if you're adding new boxes and stuff to your to your objects, and you want to, you know, quickly move this object onto this other one, um, up here there's a there's an align tool. I believe on by default it's set to these two little bars here. Um, if you click and hold on that, there's a little align tool with a lightning bolt, bolt the little Harry Potter tool there. Uh, so if you click on that, um, whatever you have clicked, if you just click something else, it'll just align to it instantly without uh, you having to select anything else. Which is nice. So if you want to like model a box over here uh, and then just quickly align it there, at least it'll be centered and, and all that. Default, uh, shortcut shift A. Oh, is it sweet? Yeah. Nice. Good to know. I never look up default shortcuts. I don't know why. I totally should because they're there and then I just have them. But sometimes I just forget. If you're ever uh, stuck on. Um, a part of your um, object here. Like, I didn't bring any pencils or paper today, but sometimes it helps just to like try and draw out what you're making on paper. Just be like, okay, what kind of objects are these? How are these fitted together? Sometimes it's good to just brainstorm there if you can't do it in 3D if you're if you're kind of like frozen. So it's always nice to have a pad of paper with you. This guy. What does this look like again? All right. So uh, the night. I don't know if you guys remember when I was saying when you switch viewports, you hit F and then Z to um, to move over. Z is really awesome when you're in edit poly mode because it'll focus on the polygon you have selected. So if you um, you know especially when you're kind of deep in something and there's lots of objects, if you just select a face and the hit Z, it'll just center your viewport on that uh, polygon or vert or whatever it is. Vert's kind of weird because it'll zoom in really, really close, but um, it's still super handy. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to model this thing. 
go over top here. Left a few boards. All right, so now it's angle ten. Here. Make that straight back here. All right. So when you're dealing with stuff that kind of overlaps or is supposed to kind of complement a shape, uh, angles are really important. So you know I'm making this little guy here that covers this up. So this edge needs to be parallel to all these other edges. These angles. You know I can't just eyeball this and, and have it like slightly off like sometimes it might look okay um, but you know if you just have all these different angles it's gonna start looking really funky you know try and keep your stuff parallel um, or or like you know stick to this one 90 degrees I didn't want to have this guy go back down and, and travel along this because it would be a really sharp edge as well so have it go back down to 90 and it kind of feels like its own thing and same with back here at first I had this guy parallel to that and it doesn't look that bad um, Actually, I might even like that more than having this. So never mind. Um, <laughs> it looked it looked worse in um, in sideways wireframe mode, and then I kind of like it now. And uh, when I look at it, so uh, so anyways, always remember, always keep in mind what your angles are doing. Smooth and save. All right, cool. So then I'm going to do this top tape deck thing here. I can just copy this. So sometimes when you start copying stuff over and over and then edit verts, sometimes your uh, your pivot might start getting into weird places. Um, so I like to reset my pivot once in a while, just when I'm whatever, sick of where it is. So you can go to the third part of your modify panel. It's called hierarchy. And then go to effect pivot only, which is your first uh, kind of click button here. And then uh, under alignment, there's center to object. You click that, and it'll just put the pivot right back in the center of your of your dude there, just for a quick, quick reference. Excuse me. Uh, all right, and then we got this uh, top thing here. So let's just um, model that down. Maybe just shrink this thing overall a little. What is this thing like? Uh, okay, stick into that. All right, let's just get rid of these edges and keep this simple again. Actually had this little thing on the inside. Maybe I'll do that first because I kind of like that. there and then you can see this bit underneath so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this guy back here and I'm gonna move its bottom plane so it intersects um, that there I'll switch to my left viewport 
and uh, also get used to using uh, F3 and F4. They're your shortcuts for um, wireframe and see-through. So F3 will go just wireframe, and F4 will add wireframe onto a shaded thing already. Um, so get used to using those as well, because uh, it's really quick and sometimes really good to see inside your objects. So we're going to have this guy here, maybe a little further back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some, a couple of cuts right there. And um, if you ever want to, like if you like an angle that you already have, always remember you can use your edge constraints or your different constraints here. So if I put this on edge, I'll be able to move these edges upwards and uh, they'll keep in line with these guys here. So we'll kind of try and keep it... Um, in line as best as it can. Sometimes you can mess that up. All right, 45. And then uh, that's still parallel to that guy, but maybe I want to parallel to this guy. I don't know what this thing is, but it's a bunch of boxes stacked and intersecting. You get some layers. I don't know what it is. It's a track tape deck thing. Cool. All right. And then it goes. Um, well, I'm going to do those underneath connection things later once I get these two things in position. I kind of went over detailed on that little thing. I got a little obsessed with it. So I move on. All right. Let's make the, uh, the rest of this underneath part here. So start imagining what this is like. So we got our monitor here. Uh, it looks like it's kind of thicker on this one side, maybe attaches to this thing, and then it gets thinner here, so all the pipes have some place to go into. So let's, uh, let's do that for it. So let's uh, make a box here, quick align it to this dude. So it's going to attach to this. This thing looks actually a lot bigger than what I have, so maybe I'll uh, scale this down or move this down a little. Thicken that up. Convert that to an edible poly. Grab some of these bottom verts here. All right. up a little. Did you forget to save? No, it's not that. I just, I didn't take a closer look at one cylinder here, and it's like, oh, it looks great from this one side. I kind of didn't really, because, uh, if you leave snaps on, sometimes it does some screen. Yes, yeah. If you leave snaps or uh, constraints on, yeah, that sucks, dude. So one half looks great. The other half. Symmetry, symmetry. here. Uh, what's happening over here? It kind of gets thinner. It's kind of going to go into this thing, so I'm going to thicken this thing up too, because it goes all the way down. Yeah, that looks good. Alright, so then... Uh, Stuff happens back there. 
All right, then we got this cool piece here that kind of meshes onto this. So for now, I'm just going to make this out of some tubes. Actually, what I might do with this guy, because I want those tubes to have a good place to get in. I might just inset them. Make some cylinders. So I'm going to line that just to get it generally close. You guys play the Witcher, Witcher Three? Yes. Man, it is so good. I've been playing it at home. Oh, oh yeah, nice. Uh, it's so good, man. The thing I love about the Witcher is that like all of the side quests are like really good stories. They are. That's like probably one of my because that's my big beef with uh, Fallout. A lot of times, I liked Fallout Three for that. Fallout Four, some of the side quests were just they were just boring. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Witcher just did a really nice job of. Just making everything interesting. Yeah. One, oh, I haven't seen them in a while. <laughs> one, one thing I like about Mudbox actually is it yells at you to save. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I like that. It starts like blinking and stuff. Yeah, save, save. Um, okay, okay. Oh, The Witcher. One little thing. It's just a little minute detail, but I just fucking love it because they put it in. Is when you go to sheath your sword, he taps it up with his. Backhand. Oh, does he? So oh, I never noticed that. He'll hit it with his left hand and then we'll put it in so the sheet goes up. So it, Oh, that's it's awesome. So you could actually do it because yeah. everybody always does this somehow and it's yeah. impossible. Or like cuts through the sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or you have the trunks thing you just toss it out. And then yeah, oh yeah. That's if you're badass. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's awesome. Like all the characters are so likable or hateable. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm pretty early on still. Um, uh, I'm doing the Baron stuff right now. Yeah. And man, that is just such a awful but good story. Yeah. Have you met, uh, met Triss yet? Yeah. Triss's thing was awesome. You know, um, oh, I think, where is it? I can't remember the company makes it, the Project Red. Yeah, CD Project Red. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't remember where they're from. They're from uh, Poland. Poland. Yeah. Poland. Yeah, because um, like, they were hiring a lot. Yeah, they're my people. Yeah. But um, they're. They, they had uh, Playboy, made a Playboy magazine solely of Triss. Oh, really? Yeah, they, yeah. they modeled out super high res models. Like nudes of her? her? Oh, that's so and weird. They, they post her, and it's like. That's nuts. funny. Oh, are those, are those are pipes? Yeah, I kind of made these cylinders, but these are actually pipes. Like the I played Witcher two, yeah. yeah, yeah, two was awesome. I think I started playing one, but the combat one, the combat one is garbage. Yeah, compared, yeah, that's why I, I could like I kind of went back to one after playing two, and I'm yeah, like, I, I, I can't really two. play I this. With two, and I went to one. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm just playing this for the story. Yeah, no, I couldn't do it. But yeah, three is just spectacular, especially yeah. for like I mean, they're like a big company now, but they're still like a small indie company comparatively. Yeah, and they can make something that's you know better than a Fallout or. Or whatever is pretty impressive. I can't wait for Cyberpunk though. Yeah, that's gonna be a long time probably. Yeah. It's been delayed in the trailer. trailer it says what the uh, release date when it's done. Yeah, and that's cool. Good for those guys. Just you get they they want to make good games. They just they want to pump stuff out. So yeah, I am okay with that. Yeah, what I'm like what I, what I like is that they're like they're not gonna rush this game. They're like most company will like Treyarch will throw out a freaking. Call of Duty every month. Yeah. And it's garbage and it has to do like 40 updates so it's decent. Yeah, exactly. 
that they didn't want to make it solid to begin with. Nope, those guys are sweet. They're yeah. awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> you gotta change it. Change the there we go. All right, we're good. All right. So uh, I have this pipe right here. I have actually a lot of pipes that um, uh, have a bend in them. All right, so these guys go up and they bend in. These guys go down, and I think they kind of bend, tuck in underneath this thing. Um, obviously, making them out of a cylinder would suck. Um, so we we did a little bit of spline work last week. We kind of just talked about splines. Now this is probably the best use of splines ever. So. Uh, no, you don't even have to do that. It's just, um, if I want a, a pipe, you just go to splines, select line, and just make a 90 degree line, just straight down and straight over. If I just want a nice 90 degree smooth pipe, and uh, go to the modify panel. Under rendering, you could do uh, enable in viewport, which will actually render out a mesh version of your spline. Uh, from here, you could adjust how many sides it has. Sorry. Uh, how many sides it has, um, and all that stuff. And then it has a really awesome tool. So if you select fillet. the vert, it has a fillet tool, which is yeah. probably like the best thing ever. If you scroll down here, there's a little guy here called fillet. fillet. And uh, if you hover over your vert here, you'll get a weird kind of like double arrow looking thing up here, angle corner. And if you click and hold, it'll just, um, it'll make a really nice smooth edge for you or a uh, bend for you. And the nice thing about that, even after you do it, you can still select the thickness. You know, obviously, if you go too thick, it'll start intersecting on itself. Um, and you get a nice 90 degree, you know, smooth, clean bend in that. And aside from this being really, you know, nice and easy to do, the best part about it is, is they have a little button here, which I don't know why it's not on by default. Um, so never forget to put it on, called Generate Mapping Coordinates. So if you click that on, and you convert this guy to an edible poly, if you throw in unwrap modifier on it, which I didn't set up my shortcut, I forgot. It actually unwraps it nice and straight for you. Kind of shitty, like it's scaled and stretched and stuff, but it's perfectly straight. Um, so if you go to, you know, checker, like it's all squished on the one because it just fits it into the square. But if you just go, it's a perfect unwrap. Like obviously it's gonna stretch and squish a little on the bend because there's nothing you can do about that. But trying to unwrap anything that's ever bent or swirly is the worst nightmare ever. <laughs> that's my goal. I had the vines on them. Yeah, no, I, vines are perfect, right? And you can do like if you do with uh, with splines. Did you? It's the worst, yeah, it's right? Garbage. Oh, yeah. Um, no, and so this is. I mean, it's perfect. And then the other cool thing. Um, right now the seam is right here, but if we backtrack. Um, I believe you can do uh, go back here. Yes. Well, I guess you can't see the seam. There is a um, angle button here, which will rotate where your edges are. So you, yeah, you can just do yeah exactly if you don't like where the seam is because sometimes it'll put the seam on the outside and that's the thing that you'll see the most and you want it on the inside and vice versa. Um, so it has a nice control over that. All right. So as the model, I'm just gonna have this tube here. Forty-five degrees. Now, when you start rotating stuff in Max, um, obviously sometimes moving around starts kind of being shitty because things aren't where they should be or how they should be. Uh, so remember, um, up here, right beside your uh, your move tool, a few bars over, there's a little uh, pull down menu, and it says view by default. You can select local on that, and it'll allow you to move your object on its local axis. So if you rotate it, now you see it's actually aligned with this guy. Um, so it's really nice if you want to, you know, just move stuff around um, on that axis. That's part of sweet. Uh, but the one thing you should never do is try and move a lot of verts on that axis. Oh shit, it's working. Oh wait, it's not. It's not local. Mm -hmm. Because it'll do this. So it's going to try to move each vert on its own local axis, and, and it's not good times. Uh, that being said, if you, like, I have this guy rotated, I want to move these verts inward. Uh, obviously, that's going to really suck on um, on a view um, um, coordinate system. 
Um, if I switch it to local, my verts are going to do apeshit stuff. But there's a little thing here called parent. And whoa, it's huge. Uh, for, some, for some reason, sometimes your gizmo gets huge when you do that. Mm -hmm. um, but parent will use the access of the game object itself, or like the, the actual mesh, instead of each vert. And then you can move your verts on that local access without, um, without them having exploded. Being explosive. But for some reason, the gizmo gets gigantic. I had a bug once where my gizmos just went huge for like forever. <laughs> And I couldn't get them to go away. It was awesome. I think I ended up just reinstalling Max or something. All right. I had this issue where all my tools went white. I didn't know what was what. Oh, yeah. that's so crazy. I had to do a complete uninstall. Yeah, it's the worst, right? Sometimes Max just like, oh, whatever. Can't you scale your gizmos using uh, plus and minus? You can. Um, but then when you switch over back to view, then your other gizmo is super tiny. Oh, okay. So you could do it, but for some yeah. reason they're just different on either yeah. on either way. Yeah, but then I had mine where it was just giant. giant, and then if I scaled it, sometimes it would switch back, and it was just, yeah. it was not good times. Like when you're, you're scaling something really big, but you need to be accurate, so you just have the gizmo in the middle. And you scale it up and zoom into where the one edge is. Yeah. And you're like, like moving the pivots so you can like <laughs> Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, it's funny, eh? It's funny some of those stupid workarounds we have for for dealing with stuff. Yeah, it's, it's half of your job is just finding stupid ways of making stuff work better. Alright, so I got these guys. There's some like sweet looking fucking shape under here, but I'll address that in a little bit. Um, actually, no, I'll address that now because I think that's going to handle where a lot of my pipes are going here. So this guy looks like he's kind of like a cradle for these guys, but he kind of comes out on like a on, like an angle over here. And I guess that's kind of what this monitor is connected to. So um, I'm going to model him out. So he is, he's probably going to follow this shape somewhat. Or is he part of that guy? Yeah, he might be part of that. Maybe underneath. I'm going to make him separate. You know, sometimes you like, you can get caught up trying to model stuff out of one object or, or whatever. Sometimes you just got to stop yourself and be like, no, no, make a new one. Just be okay with some intersection. It's not bad. All right, so all right, that there. Uh, then what does it do? It kind of goes in these pipes and just like way back in there. So maybe I'll move. Yeah. Go. What happened? Um, I was trying to figure out how to run this one part. The inside of this one, with all the pipes and shit. Oh, yeah. Just start. Just do pipe by pipe. Yeah. yeah. Just make yourself like the, the black part that's under there. Make that shape. Yes. So then you have like something to put the pipes along. Yeah. And then um, and then just start laying them um, down. Actually, the easiest way to do it would be figure out the shape of that and just unfold it as a flat plane and then run all of your pipes and then bake your normal Yeah, yeah, you can do it. that too. So that you don't have to have them all bend 90 degrees and stuff. You yeah. just do it all as one flat. Yeah, you can totally do that as well. Sometimes it is good to just start breaking your stuff apart and, yeah. and model it kind of separately. Well, yeah, like if you look at that, it's like it's going to be all normal maps anyway. Yeah, so exactly. That, yeah. So might as well, might as well just do it on the side. Yeah.
Okay, then what's he doing? He uh, comes out here. So he goes straight. So about there, and then this part extrudes out. something. Let's try and get some better angles on this stuff here. down here. So then we're gonna have some side monitors. We got that. Well, let's um, let's finish off this bottom piece here. And maybe start positioning things into place. Chamfer for an hour. Let's 
set because then it's going to cause me more trouble than it's worth. Over forty five hundred and eighty. Save my file. You figure after modeling for a bunch of years, control S would just be like a thing I do all the time, but I still have to like mentally remember it. Stupid. some sort of like attachment thing that one of these pipes is going into. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, it's this thing. It's kind of just in there now. Maybe I'll add another cut in here so I can get that back. down here for these pipes to go into as if they're feeding into some sort of something or other. And then uh, to here, fix their angle. Always fix an angle. So that way these pipes have something to go into here on the bottom and then this pipe has Pipe has something to feed to in on it from the top. And then I like those bendy pipes that they have in there. So let's uh, let's make another one. So I'm gonna go from the left viewport. And 
I had like this cool 45 degree pipe, so I'm going to make one of them. And a bit thicker. I'm going to fillet this first part. And I'm going to fillet these guys. Actually, no, I'm not going to fillet those. Maybe I will chamfer them. No, I will chamfer them manually later. So I want them to be a little soft, but still be 45 degrees. Sometimes you can't do that yourself. All right, so number one. That. Maybe. Yeah, maybe I will fill it in after all. Just that one separate to get just the slight angles. Pipes, pipes going over top, and then this thing kind of ends over here, and some sort of gibberish happens. How you guys doing with your stuff? It's going all right. Mm -hmm. So then we have, we got this thing hanging. There's going to be some sort of base over here. And then we just need a way to kind of like finish off this stuff here. This thing's getting lower and lower. that don't need to exist. For now, anyways. So 
I'll select my borders here. I'm going to use the cap tool just to close this off because I deleted a bunch of stuff. I'm just going to delete these two edges because I don't need them. Chain for this guy. here just to select this stuff. We got maybe we got like a yeah we got some pipes going in from one side to the other. I'm gonna do those later. Any like hanging pipes and stuff I usually do later on just because um, if I'm gonna angle my thing differently, they're obviously gonna hang different with gravity, so I'm gonna do those later. But I might put some couplings in just so I kind of remember where things are going. here. This will be some couplings for this thing. Obviously I'm going to have to chamfer them and stuff. Oh, what the hell is this? Oh uh, yeah, sometimes when you have a giant poly, I left this giant polygon up top here, and you can see it's attaching really stupidly over top. It's trying to like figure out where the edges connect. Sometimes you just have to go through and manually connect a couple things just so um, you don't get any of that nonsense. Alright, so this guy's going to connect there. And then maybe where these wires they come at the bottom, bottom out front, bottom side. Thank you. 
Americans. Right there. Okay, we'll figure out all that back stuff later once the monitors are in place. Same with all this, this is all kind of working together. Got a bunch of little monitors. This fucking thing in the back here. All right. So next, I'm think I'm going to just start kind of putting these things into place and uh, then filling in all the stuff that, that kind of like attaches together. So we'll continue that after a short break.